split style of just camping Odo on they because that is where they got a lot of their wins in the second half of last split. And if you can shut Huni down, he's a big playmaker that you just kind of eliminate in the early game. Yeah, definitely the case. And uh, I mean, it was back in week two, I believe. Uh, Zerse actually had 0% jungle proximity yep. with Oduamne. Yep. And Echo Fox is looking at that and then with their 100% <laughs> jungle yeah. proximity. You know? uh, so uh, Dardoch definitely loves to go top lane, uh, loves Absolutely. to get Huni ahead. Those are two of the guys who are supremely confident on Echo Fox, always willing to take a fight, always you know confident that they can outplay themselves uh, from any situation. So. We'll see what Splice is going to go for him here, but we are definitely not going to see the Aatrox. We again. love to ban it on blue side in NA. I don't know what it is. A lot of bans going towards the funnel from the side yeah. of Splice. Three support bans already hitting the board. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw a priority on something like the Morgana or Tom Kench from the side of Splice. Kasing is a big Morgana player. He does like those range supports. And interestingly, Echo Fox going for a very early Zoe. Perhaps that's a denial away from Niski, as that has been one of his best performing mid laners throughout the regular season. Yeah, and Demonte definitely going to be very comfortable on the Zoe. Oh, yeah. Uh, it is always funny seeing all those supports, uh, you know, banned away. Yes, it is obviously denying the strategy, but when it's like, well, these are all Dardock champions almost that are getting banned <laughs> away, you know, that Dardock, Dar Dar Alistar, definitely something to be feared here. Yeah, from Alistar. The, uh, the support? No, the jungle, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Still looking to the side for Splice. The Swain gets left open with Heimer and Nocturne now finding themselves in the ban list quite often. And this is Ronnie locked in for Zerse. Now, I'm expecting the Swain to be picked mid. Something that we've seen a couple times in Europe is when Zoe gets locked in, they do consider Swain to actually be an effective answer. Just because you can trade pretty effectively, is she needs to get relatively close range to, uh, to try and trade. And if you do land the E, because of how squishy she is, yep. you can very quickly burst her down so it's kind of a popular one over in uh, in Europe and that's kind of where I'm expecting it to go for the time being. Yeah I definitely agree you know also in when you're looking at the ultimate here from Zoe it's very easy to set up the never move so it actually catches her right as she goes back yes. uh, to her original location so that especially in combination with the Sejuani is a tremendous amount of CC and Sejuani can set you up very well with the Q with the ultimate uh, for your passive and we're gonna get a Kindred here. Uh, this is actually the first one coming out from an NALCS team, but Kindred was buffed on A12, yeah. buffed again on A13, yep. and is incredibly strong. And this mu is much more of a Dardoch style farmer carrier type champion. I'm expecting uh, to see you know, that Vladimir going bot lane. Uh, the Zoe mid, yeah. uh, but it is Echo Fox that could swap. You can around. flex everything with the comp right now with uh, Echo. Well, I say everything. You kind of expect Kindred to be jungle, you expect Zoe to be mid, but the Vladimir Kindred that, support. Yeah, it could be Kindred support. <laughs> Funnily enough, in Europe, we've actually seen Zoe support from Kasing. So uh, you never know. We'll wait yeah. until the second half of the draft to lock down the thing in. But for Splice, 80 carry locked in with the Lucian. You're expecting Kobe to be picking that one up. Swain, we're kind of expecting it to be in mid based on Niski's play start and preferences. And Zerse going back to a a kind of a comfort pick for him in the Sejuani. So they already have a little bit of scaling on their side from the mid and jungle. And you kind of look at this two through Adam Lucian, kind of team fight style coming in from Splice. Waiting for phase two to file out with the last two bands singed over at Odo Omni. We've seen that a little bit here in NA with Impact. And now what are the next two? 15 seconds for Splice are taking their time on the clock to discuss the rest of the composition as well. We'd love to see an Orn ban from the side of Splice right now because I feel that with the Singe taken off the board and with so much damage already locked in for Echo Fox, Orn would make a lot of sense from the side of them. It would give them engage, gives them a bit of a frontline tank, and I feel like that it would fit into their composition quite nicely. I, I do agree. I think it fits very well, but it's also Huni, and, and there's a, a low <laughs> chance of him wanting to play the horn. Uh, he may play it regardless, uh, as it you know having I think tanks, especially in combination with Kindred, do set up very well uh -huh. uh, for that champion to be successful. Uh, you also can pick something, you know, again like the Renekton that is just a general lane bully. Try to look for the two v two. Try to help Keep engage and, and kind of invade with that Kindred uh, to get them more and more bounties because getting to the four bounty mark for Kindred really is such a big deal. That's where you get 75 extra range and, and this champion becomes so much more of a powerful team fighter. The Pike locked in. Love seeing that play and it's going to come once again from Europe here at Rift Rivals. And now 13 seconds on the clock for Echo. You called it. Two final bands. The Orn does go to the top side. Huni's feeling saucy this game. But yep. the question is, maybe, Orny gonna, is maybe. Orny, is Huni going to play the Orn? <laughs> I think because, he will. Uh, I mean, we've seen, uh, I believe, uh, like, Vladimir is a very comfortable champion for Huni as well, and they may just look to put him bot, and maybe they put Altec up in the top lane, something that Echo Fox is not unknown for doing. It's definitely possible, but Altec has already played Vladimir bot twice uh, this split. 
Uh, didn't do as well the first game, really kind of fell flat there, but his second game did have an extremely per impressive performance, really did, you know, kind of show up big time on the champion, and he has been pretty vocal in interviews talking about the fact that he feels uh, that he is kind of the best Vladimir player of the marksman in North America. So we're going to see where it all goes, but should be that Shen Vladimir bot, and Shen also working well in coordination, I think, with an aggressive jungler here, like the Kindred, is going to be pretty nice. But they did get the counter pick for Oduamne. Uh, Mundo certainly can take over against the Norn, and, and that's really kind of why they went for the red side. So we'll see what they can get out of it. I am a little concerned for Splice. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is Ooh. this the funnel coming out from Splice? Because it, um, I love Swain Pike bot lane. I think it's an amazing kill lane, and you can generate a lot of pressure. I also think uh, Swain does relatively well into the Vladimir too. And the fact that they have no smite on Niski on the uh, Lucian suggests to me that they are just going to have a it's standard a mid lane, yeah. and they're just going to run him into the Zoe. And by going for the cleanse, that implies it even more. Um, but this surprises me. The fact that they would go for that shift up looks like that they are trying to actually play more through their bot lane as they have done so far through the regular season. Really an interesting fight that both teams are going to have to dissect here. You have the Vladimir Pool, Shen Stand United, Zoe back and forth, Kindred's ultimate in Lamb's Respite. It's going to be tough to take this team down, but it looks like Splice is ready. They've crafted quite a fight composition. This thing can turn into one hell of a death ball. Definitely can, and I really am going to have a lot of eyes on Dardock, on Xerxe. Xerxe you know, was one of the best junglers in Europe last split. Oh, yes. This split, he has been struggling yep. uh, for Splice, but you know the jungle matchup is so incredibly important because if Kindred gets ahead, they can roam around the map, challenge you on those bounties yeah. nonstop, and really get to a dominant spot. But if put behind, it becomes so difficult to get the bounties to really have relevance in the team fight. And, and you end up in a situation where you're forced to always use the ultimate very defensively earlier than you want to, and it can sometimes actually help the other team more. And uh, we do have a couple of kindred players in Europe, the Unicorns of Love jungler being a big fan of the champion. And when I speak to him about her, the one thing he says is, you got to have priority in your lanes. You have to make sure you have good wave clear. you got to make sure you can go for early trades. And the reason for that is because, as you rightly said, you want to invade on Kindred. You want to get those marks. You want to be as yeah. proactive as possible. And if you don't have that lane priority, it becomes that much harder. So when you look across the board, Orn should, in theory, have it during the early levels. Same for Zoe in the middle lane against the Lucian, uh, depending on who's able to get to the lane first. And yeah. in that case, I'm kind of liking what Fox have drafted for themselves. The question is, will they be able to be that proactive and go for those invades Minions against Splice? And you've also got to say that the healing debuffs are going to be so ridiculously important against this Splice lineup when you have Swain, when you have Mundo, when you have Illusion, that's almost guaranteed even going into a Blade of the Rune King. Like, there's such a ridiculous amount of sustain on this team yeah. uh, that I really want to see someone from Echo Fox, you know, Itemize for that early, whether it's you know the Vladimir rushing for an early Morellos or whatever. Right. But someone needs a healing debuff, and and this is one of the things that uh, sometimes, much to the detriment of these pro teams, is ignored. Uh, so I am going to kind of try to track that and, and see when they pick it up. Eye on the inventories as we get into the game and follow that as well as these lanes. We're saying Demonte and Huni do have that aggression to help Dardoch. Get into the jungle and do some invading as we see the bot lane of Alltech and Adrian getting pushed in a bit here as they have just a bit more wave clear to start on the side of Splice. Now this bot lane matchup excites me quite a lot because uh, the thing about Shen is his base damages in his early levels are really strong. And we talked about it last game, Talia Shen was a really common bot lane that really could be a kill lane. Um, and so when you pair Shen up with a champion, you usually have a lot of threat. And when Ooh. Vladimir hits six, you have the ability to go for a lot of those fights as well. But Pike Swain is a very similar one that European teams love to run themselves. Uh, and what you can do is every time you land the hook from Pike, you then drag the target back in, yeah. and then you can follow it up with even more damage in CC from the Swain too. And you can see that the moment Ooh. one thing lands, the follow-up immediately Amazing comes. Amazing damage onto Alltech. He actually missed the last Crimson Rush on a heal that would have really kept him nice and healthy, so Splice one in. Yeah, I mean, Alltech is just getting caught by everything right now. Yep. First, it's the never move into the hook, then it was the hook into the never move. Uh, there's so much displacement from this Splice bottom lane uh, that really is very, very powerful. And we have Dardock up here on the top side uh, going for the Scuttle. It is a bounty, so he's going to be able to not only get that Scuttle, but he hits level Oh, my word. Mark. <laughs> They're just getting slammed. Right? Yeah, that hurts. 
get the Bobham hammer out. It's already been used. Three minutes on the clock. Lucian's Here's that in first. We were thinking about if they can get Dardock in safely, and that's a big if. Two flashes over the wall. They silence on Nisky, or so they either sleep him. But they're going to be out of this one nice and safe. The fight from Huni and Odo Omne starting to the river as well, but you never cross that river alone. And they almost meet Xerxes and Niski there. Huni gets out safely. Pretty poor invade from Dardoch when Niski had the push. Yeah. He's going to be the first one to respond. Uh, Dardoch feeling strong, wants to get in there by himself, but you know is going to give up first blood over to Niski, which is just going to make it that much harder for Demonte. And boys, I got to say, this is very uncharacteristic from Splice. Winning an early game, having an early game lead, <laughs> they have not been able to find those so far this split. The fact that their 2v2 bot lane is playing hyper aggro and actually finding leads, and the fact that Niski and Xerxes were able to successfully punish Dardoch in an early kill, yeah, this is a great start for Splice. The question is, can they keep this lead up? Really, it's just brilliant from Echo Fox then, putting them out of their comfort zone. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, yeah. wait, we're ahead, what, what do we do? do? <laughs> uh, but it is, you know, Dardoch, really a, a pretty disrespectful invade. Yeah. You know, when Zoe is not going to be able to get there first. Demonte came as fast as he could, but yeah. you know it's actually just closer uh, for the Lucian to be able to roam over there. Uh, Niski and Zerse, you know, well coordinated, fully committing their summoners. Yeah. They do get the first blood on Lucian, an early game champion, yep. looking good. And while Orn had the push up top lane, like if he'd invaded maybe the Krugs, it would have yeah. made a little bit more sense. But as you rightly said, he tried yep. to make an invade onto the Raptors and he ends up getting punished for it. So we'll keep an eye on how many marks Dardoch does actually have throughout the course of the game, because you talked about it as well, that fourth mark is really the key for the Kindred when you get that extra range and where you become much more valuable uh, in these skirmishes and fights. Yeah, I mean, for Kindred, it can be very difficult in team fights when you don't have four bounties because your range is quite low. Uh, it's very easy for the champions to like get on your face and kind of really just run you down, outstat you almost. Uh, but once you hit four, that is really a big deal. 75 extra range every three thereafter is an additional 25, which is a bonus, yes. but not necessarily needed. Nice knock up, no follow. A lot of caster minions there Huni is taking into consideration. Up but he's Thursday. also getting a little bit of aggression. Odomne says, I'm taking hits, but I can definitely pull him in. As Huni plays aggressive, we can play off of that. And, you know, and it can just be a, a simple kind of cover. Like, he wants to walk up there, yeah. you know, see, hey, if Darlock's coming in, we can maybe win that 2v2. True. Uh, but it's straight back to the scuttle, and you can see the bounty gets actually spawned over on the Grom, which Oof. is basically impossible for Darlock yep. to get at this point in the game with his bottom lane being pushed in with no vision over there. So uh, a lot of those early bounties, you just have to kind of accept that based on its positioning, you won't get it. Don't even try. Just continue to farm. Continue to stay relevant. Just on the edge of the taunt, Spirit's Refuge goes down to deny the incoming damage, and they push Kabi out of lane, but that's one of the first times it's happened is Kasing backed, and they're a little disjointed. Mm -hmm. I wonder if Kasing will look to go for a roam. It looks like the early levels, he hasn't decided to try and rush mobility moots. He's actually decided to upgrade his support item to increase that gold generation, get a little bit more resource invested. They're looking for a dive up here. Pre-6 on Mundo. Huni's going to set it up. In they go. Just before he hits it, it'd be a great time to get the kill down. He hits 6, hits down the ultimate. This could really swing things. Huni takes one last shot, and they go one for one with the assist. Best case scenario for Odo Omne there, given that he was getting collapsed upon, he just gets the level 6 and is able to trade one for one, while Niski still soaks up the farm, means that while the, the proactivity was good from Fox and the intention was good, unfortunately they could not deny that level 6 from Mundo. And Odo Omne, really smart thinking, you saw him run back to the minion wave, that was to get the last minion yeah. for 6, so he yeah. got the level up, gets 6, the ultimate keeps him alive just barely long enough to go for that, and uh, they're looking for a potential redive, but Dardoch... Uh, fancying his chances here on an invade and he does have a bit of help from Demonte. That's what the, makes this one a little stronger and more orchestrated than try number one. Red buff is denied for Xerxes and they make their way out for Echo Fox. I feel like you have to concede this given that Lucian is still clearing the wave up top side and Mundo only just getting back Ooh, to lane. Bounty spawn as he's doing it. Oh, that's convenient. Uh, Dardoch will be able to pick up what looks to be oh. like his second mark. Oh. Oh no, Odo Omni gonna be a pain. Back him off. They know that Niski's on the way back as well. Uh, ideally, if they can get a push in oh, he from Demonte wants it so bad. and the roam <laughs> down from Huni. This is the key thing. Huni needs to come down to help out his team and provide a numbers advantage to secure this. He has smite. He can actually just burst this down. Yeah. It's the, All right, that's fair. This one is the easiest one to do because you basically have to auto it twice and then it's in smite range yeah. because those chickens are, are pretty weak. Uh, so he will be able to pick up a second, but here's the dive once more. So track Odo Omni, level five. He needs six for the ultimate, so he does actually walk back up for the cleaver, I believe, there. The cleaver gets him the minion, gets him six, and is going to keep him alive barely long enough. And Huni 
misjudging the damage, need to flash out one yep. turret shot earlier. And Dardock wasn't level 6, so he can use yep. his ulti to save him either. Uh, and so far, Fox find themselves finally on the kill board. But overall, in terms of the early game, things are going pretty well for Splice. Fox haven't... Uh, Found a huge number of advantages. Largely, they have been punished for a couple of the plays they've tried to make. And now Splice, other ones trying to be proactive, looking for an invade onto the red buff. Ooh. You can see that Kasing already on his way up with the pike. Splice just using their numbers advantage to trade yeah. back. And Dardock has no smite, so this is there's no real chance. He's he's hoping maybe they would get scared and back off, but uh, not gonna be able to go for that. The bounty is gonna spawn right for Zerse on that scuttle. It was nice for him, but oh you know, my word! Even though Huni did go down in that dive, and the advantage kind of went to Odoamne in that one v one on the top side, the Mundo will eventually be winning in that one v one regardless. And getting Dardar to a really strong point is a big deal. So Absolutely. if we could see Echo Fox repeating to that top side, they got the turret pretty low. You can get Dardoch ahead, try to get him some of those bounties, and try to pick up first turret gold. That is a way that Echo Fox uh, can really kind of open up the map and then unlock Orn to move around and, and look for more ultimate engages. Yeah, I agree. And right now, Splice interestingly have their eyes set on the bot lane. We talked already a little bit about how you have the kill lane with the Swain and the Pike, and by generating pressure through mid lane, Miski, he's been constantly getting the push after securing that first blood and building very early Zerka's Greaves, and that's just getting them a lot of vision around the bottom half of the map for Fox. It will result in a cloud rate, it gives them a lot of priority towards the bottom lane, and uh, actually a bit of an advantage in terms of farm. And so far, Splice's bottom side of the map is definitely still the angle with which they'll look to play through in this early portion. Definitely the case, and Niski looking good. I've, I've got to give a little bit of credit, though, to, to Demonte, who is, you know, subbing in here uh, with the team. In the first game, actually looked really good on Syndra, despite his team uh, losing that. Was kind of the best yeah. performing member. Yeah. Uh, he is Few flowing floats. fairly even here against Niski, despite the fact that his, his lane opponent actually was given double off some first blood. Yeah. So, you know, Demonte certainly is having a respectable showing, and, you know, this is a big deal for him because showing up well and really performing here you know, on Rift Rivals on this international stage uh, could mean more game time for him in the regular season also. He certainly could, and I like the fact that he was moving up with his jungler to set up for another potential dive topside, but they decided not to go for it. They're going to trade for the Rift Herald instead. Splice were around the bot side of the map after securing Drake, and uh, Zerse was clearing his Gromp out, which means the Jardot can now secure this one for free, and they're set up to take either a top tower or a mid tower, depending on their prep. And I think you just go top. I mean, the turret is, is yeah. just in one hit range, so you just walk up. Mundo has no CC. You channel it in his face, and uh, you can drop that, but he does need to be careful about the Sejuani coming over and the interrupt there. Great oh, pressure on mid lane, knowing something top is going to happen as well. Zerse slowly moving in, but they saw he was on a ward. They said, we have lambs respite. We may be able to work this. Oh, nice side step from mid. A slow walk up from Niski here could actually make this fight go long. And they stop being stopped out by DeMonte. The fight stays between these four in the top lane. Call the Forge got back. He doesn't even have a chance to throw down the ultimate long enough to stay alive and right in front of Xerxes. They take down Oduamne. Yeah, Xerxes just walked away. Oduamne had not used his ultimate preemptively, and now Ekofox looking for fights on the bottom side, but that's going to be a turret without even having to use the Rift Herald. Another bounty onto Dardok, another kill onto Dardok, and they could even, you know, look to now save that Rift to break mid, as you had talked about, and kind of knock down some of the advantages that Splice has built there. And Odoamne, he didn't have his flash up. It was just about to come yeah. off cooldown. If it was available, he would have been able to dodge out of the way of that on ultimate, but unfortunately, that was not the case. And now we're seeing what Fox does when they invest their resources towards the top side of the map. We talked a little about it in draft, where one strategy Splice could look to do is try and help Odoamne, but on this window, they don't really have the damage in the two versus two that a Kindred and an Orn will have. Odo Omni just oversteps a little bit. Dardog has the slow on his E, and with no flash available, there's no way you're getting out of this situation. And, and that's why in a case like this, it's, it's often actually better as the Mundo to just preemptively ult and top yourself off. Yes, sure. you don't want to have to actually commit that and then have it wasted, but when there is the potential of a dive, using the ultimate yeah. as you're taking that damage, you actually are dealing the self-damage of the initial tick and you have a very high chance of being able to be burst down. So, you know, Oduamne not covered by Zerse, not using that ultimate early, uh, meant he goes down, means they lose the turret, and the Rift Herald can be moved mid to chunk that down exceptionally low. And that is now set up and prepped for a takedown within the next few minutes, depending on if they stay for it now, Kasing 
goes into the shallows and tries to get himself an initiation. Well, they've been able to do nothing. With the early game that they had, Niski, he got himself a kill, and he ha is still even with Demonte. He hasn't really roamed around that. We've seen him move a little bit with Xerse to get a couple of invades off, but outside of that splice, after what was a pretty decent early game advantage, have not been able to turn that into anything significant. And yeah. only now are they looking to try and secure this bot tower as oh. they go on to Adrian. Ultimate right onto Adrian. Why not? Take the guy that needs to save everybody else. The calling to the back side. And they take him down. Everybody almost getting a piece of that one as Huni teleports in. Top side of the map is now left to Odo Omne, depending, how, or depending on how long Splice stays. Looks like everyone will back off after the one kill. Echo Fox can push for mid turret, though. It is very, very low. Niski is coming back, but I mean, Dardok is going to push here with Demonte and, and look to chunk that down. Ooh. Following the Forge God for all tech. A nice give and go on the Forge God there. Oh, as nice stop watch. The ultimate copy is trying to keep himself alive here. If he throws the damage back, but it's not going to be enough as he hits second R. And now Huni is in a troublesome spot, getting locked down by Permafrost with just one more hit. Gasing's there to dive in and skewer him back, but he just misses. Huni gets himself to a safe spot, but only safe enough for Splice to catch on a few more Ooh. times. There's the final touches coming in from the rest of the, uh, Niski rather, and the rest of the team. But while all this action was happening down bot, keep your eyes on mid, because Demonte, yep. he is just pushing in that wave. He didn't feel the need to join the fight because Fox, they already secured a kill on Takobe. He was the target that they were after, and by drawing all these members of Splice down, it opened up the map and allowed Fox to get a counterplay elsewhere. Yeah, knocking down that second turret, gonna be able to open up that gold lead, and uh, Dardok, that is a bounty scuttle. That's gonna be his fourth bounty right there, which is very big, but here it is one more time. Kobe actually played this really well. Yeah. Flashes the Ornalti, then the free stopwatch on the Shen Taunt. Like, that's about as good as you can do there for Kabe. Uh, so well played him. Well, that's true. He's still overstaying the lane, and he shouldn't have been in that position in the first place. So in the situation that he was given, I completely agree with you that he did what he could, and he bought enough time for Splice to answer. But you have to question why he was even in that lane in the first place, and he didn't respect the ability of Adrian on the Shen to be able to bring two members down and secure the kill. Overall, though, we're both in agreement that Fox definitely got the win over Axe. Yeah. Not only did they get the kill in bot, yeah. they also got that tier one in the mid lane. Niski, at least, though, has been the, the beneficiary of a couple kills. You know, he has finished his Blade of Rune King, and, and now there is a lot of weight on his shoulders. You know, when you are benefited all, from all this gold that is coming to you, you have to perform in the team fights. You have to be the one to really show up and get work done because the rest of his team is kind of falling yeah. behind as the global goal goes over to, to, to Fox. And we've seen him everywhere on the map now. Has full kill participation at only three, but Clooney buying Moby Boots to be everywhere <laughs> just to deliver these Forge God ultimates. Oh, damn it. One after the other. That <laughs> guy is a creative character. <laughs> Moby Boots, so he can just, he can roam from top lane to bot lane as quickly as possible. Yep, Bring that all. ulti engage. Yep. I mean, I think it makes some sense. You're not gonna be able to 1v1 against the Mundo sure. anyway, so. Oh, Get those rotations, <laughs> and there's a pick right there. there. That's the Moby Boots right there, utilizing <laughs> the ability to move around the map. Find the pick on the cover. Gotta he's go like, fast. He's like a gliding guardian, moving from lane to lane. Gliding there wasn't the go. word I had in mind. It worked, it worked. <laughs> He's very agile. Already back in clear top lane, doesn't even miss it. And let's see where he comes in on this one. So how does he set this one up? Corbett, he doesn't have oh, vision. starts roots. it off. I mean, he has a bit of war, uh, wards, but I mean, Fox <laughs> just has God. the deeper vision. That's and Demonte, uh, he had already completed the Luden's Echo, so he had more than enough burst. And uh, Fox gaining nice momentum now after what was a very rough early game. They slowly found picks, they found more objectives, they've been the proactive team, and they're the ones now gaining control uh, over the enemy jungle. I mean, Dardock is, is getting to be pretty big. He's at five bounties, but uh -oh. he's not out. Stan United comes in, a little bit of a hop there, gets him to safety as well as they take down Kasing. Summoner spells along with him. Now Odo Omne getting the chomp down, but he's got Burning Agony on. Able to break the CC as he gets help from Kabe and Demonic Ascension. The, both these ults are going to expire, though, and then you can just dive oh. Splice. I mean, these dodge. champions are weak without their ultimate. Cooney's right on board with that Azale. They take down Odo Omne. Now to the turret. I mean, Splice is just not respecting the dive potential. Like, that is such an obvious dive. Yep. With Kabe having his ultimate expiring, Mundo's ultimate is already expired. You're already marked from the Kindred. And now, Dardock is at six bounties. He's about to get his seventh. Not only does he have his first range upgrade, he's going to get his second at 17 minutes. That is seven bounties on the Kindred. This guy is going to take over the game.
And that's kind of what we wanted to see from Echo Fox. They have all these damage dealers yep. built across the board. Huni picking up a tank, which is a little different from what we've seen so far in the regular season, but he's still getting involved so much with the rest of his team. And now Kasing trying to get something back. Oh, death from above. Scoots Huni back and puts him below. 37 seconds on that timer. Alltech not looking good. Looks like he did use the ultimate there. He's trying to get himself out. Crimson Rush still a bit away, but Zerse has no follow-up. And Permafrost. Misty has been picking up all these kills, so he's now going to yeah. be the main carry for Splice to turn this around as Dardoch is getting fed. Damonte is getting fed. The entire lineup for Fox is in a really good position, and all the pressure is starting to fall on the mid laner from Splice. And Dardoch, the best 800 gold you've ever spent, buddy. He got an Executioner <laughs> there against Mundo, against Swain, against the Blade of the Rune King, Lucian. Uh, that item is hilariously effective, yep. so it just gets tougher and tougher now because you'll put Kindred massively ahead, already on two items, seven bounties, challenging smite, and an executioner's. Even with those ultimates available now, you can just get focused down. Like, yep. they can straight up just shred you because there is really very little armor. It's it's just the Spear Visage yeah. plus the Ninja Tabbies. Like, Dardoch is going to absolutely slam this team right now. He's got to be feeling good. You think as well, it's... It, you say it, and it sounds weird. Dardoch's thinking, you banned my Alistar and my Braum? <laughs> okay, I'll show you my kindred. <laughs> let me show you my kindred. And you're like, wait, what did you say? <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. 4, 1, and 0 controlling this one. And now he feels comfortable to stay in the jungle. I feel like it's something we're seeing from junglers. You, know, you force them on to support them, and they can actually play the game. They're like, i got to prove it this time. i got to <laughs> prove what happens. And Fox, they look oh. for another fight. Drowsy onto Zerse. Does he go down, though? Adrian just a bit short there on the taunt. A bit meaning a lot as they clear out some vision here. 20 minutes in, it seems like so much has happened, but Baron is only spawning in 20 seconds. Dardoch picks himself up another stack after stealing away the Krugs. That's primarily why Fox are playing towards the top side by leaving Huni down bot. I don't know if they'll just passively be able to get that turret, but so far in these back and forth, it does feel like Huni is coming out ahead. Going for a Sheen, in fact, working towards that Iceborne Gauntlet. I do love seeing that on many Orns, just because it gives you that extra bit of trading power. Yeah, and the CDR as well is so, so big, and here comes Dardoch. Orlan is going to have to flash out of there, perhaps? No. Just ult for ult. Just a bit of pressure game, but a tower is what Fox were after. And now they will extend the gold lead to about 4,000 in their favor. Fox, a team that once they get that early lead, very rarely let go of it. They utilize advantages very effectively. Yeah. They're a very proactive team. And the, if they look, can see an opportunity for a fight, they will go for one. Oh, you think so? <laughs> right on to Demonte, down to 350 HP. A quick spell reel from Niski almost drops him. And now they're going to have to reset in the mid lane. Looks like everybody's getting sorted back out of base as you have Kabe and Adrian on that. I'm sorry, Alltech on that top side. And at this point in the game, at eight bounties, there's no more easy ones for Dart to get. It has to be on an epic monster right. or another player. So, you know, the next bounty target is actually the Baron. Um, but he's already at eight. This guy is monstrously strong. You get so much additional attack speed uh, on your Q buff there. You get the additional slow, you get the additional damage. And Dardoch can just turn around. I feel like they know Huni over the wall. He doesn't hit any terrain, but they still follow up with the kill. That's the damage you're talking about coming in from Dardoch. And that's a huge shutdown. That's a three kill shutdown. 600 gold uh -huh. straight into the pockets of Dardoch, who already is so Crazy. ridiculously strong. I mean, he is. 2,000 gold ahead of Huni right Final now. Final Dardoch, boy. Yeah. This is time to shine. He's showing off his off roll. You yeah. know, the Alistar, the yeah. bronze. <laughs> yeah, he's auto-filled right yeah, now. Exactly. He's just doing his best. Like, Ooh, what is this champion? Uh, and now they're going to go straight for the Baron. 21 and a half minutes into the game. Splice do have their jungler available, but look at the positioning of Alten. Throws down the Burning Agony. Wants that CC oh, break a little bit. Huni says, I got you, Alltech, to throw a little bit more crowd control in the fight. Crimson Rush wearing down for Alltech as they push the team off. And Adrian saying, team, need a little help on Baron as he goes real low. <laughs> yeah, Adrian actually got knocked up by the Baron there, uh, interrupting his ult, so he is stuck in the pit. Womp womp. Uh, Agafox will be forced back, but they can go straight over to the Infernal, yes. which is uh, definitely a, a pretty nice dragon to have uh, for the Vladimir, for the Zoe. It was a little unfortunate for Vox. I actually think the positioning of Alltech wasn't ideal because they didn't bring Splice close enough to force any summoner spells out. Ideally, you'd love to get a couple of TPs out from the side of Splice so then you can send Huni off to a side lane and it's easier for you to get involved in the Baron and you can generally just create more pressure around this big objective. But they just traded a couple of summoner spells. It does give them priority over the Drake. And uh, right now, they're still in a favorable position, uh, pushing all of these sideways. And now they'll reset, refresh some of their vision, and look to pressure the Baron once more. Yeah, and Dardoch's looking to join up here with Huni. He was spotted by that pink ward, though. And 
you know, you'll see Odalomne back off, so they should not be able to get this kill onto him unless he wants to try to stick around. And I mean, it's giving Xerxe the, the ability to actually come over and potentially fight off in a 2v2. Here they go. One brittle, the second one applies. You get a bit of that percent health damage. They can't even get down the Lamb's Respite. And they are going to be able to take down Huni. Kavi comes in very quickly. And Huni and Dardok are quickly turned around on this one as Huni takes a little bit longer to go down. They give that one to Odo Omni. And this is a big question mark for me because Fox don't need to be playing towards the bot side of the map. You don't need to be looking for kills onto Odo Omni when you are this far ahead, yeah. playing around Baron, utilizing the fact that Ulta is so strong on this Vladimir, looking to try and force fights is really what you want to be doing rather than playing towards this silent. And you just gave down away two big kills, a lot of shutdown gold that Spice is going to be happy with as they now relieve some of the pressure and even should get a turret in the fight. I definitely agree. It just shows how important that pink ward actually was spotting this out. And, but I mean, even if he wasn't spotted, this is a pretty bold dive to try to make. Yeah. I guess he's just assuming, hey, I have my ultimate. And, and there was actually time for Dardoch to react to that. He did have vision of Xersei as yeah. the ultimate was flying out. For so sure. you, you can either try to drop the Lambs Respite before you get stunned, or you have to actually flash it and avoid that. Um, but either way, you know, they are punished and, and spliced. Uh oh. Looking for a chase down here in Altec. Fox losing ground on the map. A nice bone spear. It skewers him back as they drop Altec. Huni comes in, though. He says there may still be a follow up fight before God misses on both sides. Three members slowly roaming up for Echo Fox. So I'm not familiar with NA games, but help me understand, boys, because <laughs> Fox now, they, they just sacrificed a their bot lane carry up towards the top side, really uncontested, and they TP in, giving away a global summoner spell that now allows Splice to actually have pressure off in the side lane, and they have a numbers advantage, giving them so much more priority. I feel like Fox, I don't understand why they're trying to make all these kills happen when yeah. they have the map pressure advantage. And I mean, I, th I think that one for Echo Fox was, was less trying to go for a kill and more Alltech just overextending for and sure. then thinking, hey, we have Shen Alt, we have TP yeah. from Huni, That's maybe fair. we can actually you know, live long enough to then turn this around. And if Dardock arrives, it starts to look pretty bad for Splice. But but again, it is a mistake, and as was the bot yep. lane dive. And, and to your point, you know, Echo Fox is kind of squandering their advantages. They're giving more time for Splice to get back in this. And while they are still at a, at a lead, they, uh, they have to be careful Absolutely. that they don't get careless with this and, and look to kind of focus around the bear. Kind of getting a little too ahead of themselves. Thinking, oh yeah, seven stacks on Kindred, damage on Huni a little bit. Not so much anymore. Because for me, one of the big strengths of Fox is actually their team fighting ability. They have yeah. a lot of talented yeah. players on their roster, and when they have a lead and they actually get into these fights, uh, they look really good. I mean, it was only last week that Altec got that pentakill on the Lucian. They're at a 10k gold deficit against Cloud9, and they won a huge team fight in mid that just swung the game around. And the fact that they're going for these side lane picks, going for these skirmishes, just... Uh, kind of goes against some of the strengths that I feel they have as a team. And I mean, honestly, for Echo Fox, a lot of their games are like this, right? They, their, their greatest strengths is also sometimes their greatest weakness. And they have, you know, almost unlimited amounts of confidence, right? They always That's feel true. that they can make the plays happen, really that they can outplay, uh, you know, their opponents no matter what the situation is. And that's why oftentimes you'll see games that are either going to be snowballed very heavily in one direction or the other. And right. regardless of the position in the game, Echo Fox very frequently plays the same way. They're going to look to fight you. They're going to look to be super aggressive and, and make these individual outplays. And sometimes, as it has been in this game, it's, it's to their detriment. But you know, it's it's also what got them ahead. So it's it's kind yep. of that, that double-edged sword. And the bright side for them is Splice is not really known for oh their proactivity. Uh, and usually they don't come back from the deficits that they fall into. So you're going to have to look at players like Xerse and uh, Kasing to find these picks and force these fights if uh, Splice want to turn this game around. There's a vampire just missing. Call the Forge God goes down. They're trying to pinch him. Altec is roaming behind. Third. Kabe is a bit of the focus. Altec just off on the side. Channeling the Tides of Blood goes in a little early on that one as Huni may just go down to start the fight. Lambs Respite is down to keep him alive. Adrian falls before it comes up. And now it's not looking good, but Fox still want to try and turn it. Otto Omni falls, and the AOA starts splashing. Kasing and Niski on the back line stay alive. Dardock starts to take aim, and here comes Demonte delivering the kill, a double onto the side of Splice as Fox move forward. And this is the team fight strength from Fox that we were talking about. They finally find the five versus five and they come out on top with a clutch ultimate from Dardock, keeping so many members alive after so many members of Fox dropped super low. You'd think Splice was gonna win it, but in the end, Fox come out on top and they secure an inhibitor. 
nicely done there from Echo Fox. And when Dardox stays alive in the fight, he's going to be so, so strong. Yeah. Sitting on three and a half items, nine bounties to his name. And they're looking to move over to the Baron now. Going to be straight onto it. We'll see if Splice can actually get out here and try to contest this. They don't really have any vision in the area, but they're aware of the possibility. The Sing can definitely do a pretty good team stun, but he has to fully commit. He has a shot on the left side with Odo Omne coming in. Odo Omne, no flash, so the side, the side he chooses, the side Committed. he stays on. Niski on the bottom. Baron grabbed up by Echo Fox. Are they released from this uncontested? The ultimate comes out from the Forge God to disengage the fight, but Niski is trailing on the right. Echo Fox do make it out, but now Splice in the driver's seat to take down some turrets. Yeah, Fox Maybe. secure themselves a pretty quick Baron. No minions. Kindred and the Vladimir taking that down quick, but let's have a look back at how this fight starts. Uh, you can see the Vladimir is coming up from the river and just Splice are grouped up mid, so Fox see an opportunity to force a fight here. The key note is that Niski is forced to flash very early on because his positioning is not great, and Huni is the target focus, so the tank gets very low, but then he stays alive and Shen drops at the beginning of the fight. Demonte's still fine and gets a huge amount of damage off the backline while Dardock is untouched as well. So while the fight initially Ooh. looks good for Splice, it's only the tanks that are dropping low while the damage dealers are still free to shred through the Splice line. And as those ultimates expire, as the Swain ultimate falls, as the Moon ultimate falls, as all these big cooldowns yeah. are used uh, for Splice, their damage starts to really peter out very, the very quickly. Be over. And, yes. You know, Dardock is now on 10 bounties. I mean, he's 125 attack range above the Lucian, so it becomes Ooh. that much easier for him to actually yeah. you know, hit those attacks and find the angles where he can really maximize his DPS with all the gold that he has. That damage is going to become that chance where you completely change the mind of that person in a fight. This he's going to have to turn away if he gets hit by those shots from Dardock. A hit in from Altex. Sanguine Fool keeps himself alive as Huni also triggers on the Forge God. They are quickly going in, relentlessly suffocating Splice. Odo Omne on the Mundo almost going down, but he just keeps himself alive as he's loving the pain. Huni backs off. Dardock on the front line, feeling like he can toy with a few more dance steps. And the team of Echo Fox feels good taking down the inhibitor. Fox feels quite happy as they walk away with no kills, but a secured inhib and a minute and a half still left on the band. Immediate TP up towards the top side because they want to keep the pressure going. Niski hasn't even had an opportunity to back yet as he just hits the fountain. Fox is still stealing away the enemy jungle, and they just want to keep things going as they look to get a win over Splice. And Hoonie's got his ultimate you know, up in about 20 seconds. Yeah. They can look for a rinse and repeat here, but he is far ahead of the team. Pretty ridiculous for him. Every 60 seconds, he can call the Forge God, and it has been the majority of their initiations. Odo Omne getting taken down. You can see that Executioner's calling, doing work as Dardock just aims true and takes him down in almost a 3 one push. Flames of Spike goes down, so they can deny that turret damage coming in, and they quickly keep pushing Splice back onto their fountain. It's the only place they can find Solace at this point. 30 minutes into the game, Echo Fox looks to take the Nexus. All three inhibitors are down. Splice are left on their last leg. And here comes the Gloss Duck plus five. Cersei going for broke, trying to get in with the team and add the permafrost. Splice doing what they can to take down Adrian. They found Kasing and Zerse. Echo Fox on the Nexus. Dardock routes it around the side to get another kill. But Echo Fox are going to get the win over Splice. And ALCS ties it up 2-2, two to two, thanks to a couple wins there over Splice, and... They'll take it. Yeah, they'll take it. Echo Fox showing a, a pretty damn strong game. Definitely some sloppiness, you know, once in that advantage, but really, uh, Dardock showing off that Kindred, showing just how strong it can be. Such a heavy focus on those bounties. It did, you know, get him killed at the start, but he was able to consistently pick them up, racking up 10 or 11 bounties throughout the game. Became monstrously strong. Uh, and another good performance from Demonte. Really credit to this yep. guy. Showed up on the Syndra, looking strong in the bot lane that game. 5-0-5 here on the Zoe, always staying safe, getting the poke out, and, and really a, a pretty strong showing overall. Yeah, for me, two big things were learned, and that was that uh, Fox's team fighting is still very scary. Uh, when they yeah. group up as a five, they perform extremely well. And I think it's something that many teams at this tournament have to respect. The other big thing I learned is that Splice still don't know how to use gold leads. There were so many throws coming in from the side of Fox that Splice really could have punished a little bit harder. And when they were in a position to punish, they never really tried to force anything. And that lack of proactivity is something that's going to hurt them throughout this tournament because this meta is all about trying to force plays, being active on the map, and looking for fights whenever you see them. All right, well, to get some thoughts from the victors, let's go ahead and hand it off to Abali and Echo Fox's fire below the mountain.
Thanks, guys. Huni, congratulations on ending Echo Fox's Rift Rivals Day 1-1. One and one. Now, what are your thoughts on your own performance and the entire tournament so far? Uh, I mean, first of all, this event is like really made me fun, actually. It's really exciting for everyone, I feel like. I'm even like really exciting when I play, and you know, I can't imagine how you guys are gonna be like having fun. So, I mean, for for now, I think it's like we're having like one lose and one win for day one. I think it's like fine to record because as long as we're gonna win for tomorrow. So, I mean, we're gonna win tomorrow. So for now, we'll actually learn a lot when we versus Fnatic. But it was kind of felt bad. It was first time when I met Fnatic after I left. So I really wanted to win badly, but you know, it's whatever. We're gonna win. We're gonna win for tomorrow. So besides winning, what else in Rift Rivals are you really looking forward to? If you're so excited for the fun of aspect about it. Yeah, I mean, I smurfed already the old random roof, <laughs> <laughs> and to be two was really fun, but unfortunately we could not win it. But you know, right now it's like there's a last show match was it uh, for today and. Tomorrow and final will be like way more fun, and actually we are playing for you know win because like I really want to prove all gain and is greater than Europe. So definitely I want to win for tomorrow and Tuesday for sure. So the score is all tied up right now, two two NA EU. You only have one game tomorrow, and then I believe it's Team Liquid and a hundred thieves who have more two games. Two games. How confident are you, and how much faith do you have in your friends? You know, Team Liquid is going to do really well since they're, I'm pretty sure they're like best team in right now in the night. And, and 100 teams, they, just, they look pretty good only there for today games. I'm confident to say that for tomorrow is going to be, no matter what, NA is going to be like higher record than Europe. So we get the site selections. Well, Huni, thank you and congratulations again. And to wrap up the day, let's hear from the analyst desk. Thank you very much, Avli. Echo Fox bringing in the final victory of the day. Evens us up at two and two throughout day one. And Rift Rivals sets us up for a very exciting day two. But let's admit, was not a walk in the park for Echo Fox today, even in this victory. I mean, most of our games today, when we thought they were going to be one-sided at some point, then, you know, a team would kind of randomly do something that backfired and then the other team got back in the game. Kind of the same deal here. Yeah, it reminded me a lot of that G2 game where I didn't feel like Echo exactly. Fox was ever in danger of losing, but it was pretty ugly. I like Hoonie's Orn. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, just I don't like how it, many Jack. boots of mobility ultimates can you whiff or wall stones can you miss while still winning by like 9,000 gold. Yeah. I'm convinced he just wanted to look really bad on it so that they stop picking it for him. He just doesn't want him to ever get locked in. Right. Yeah, I'll still get the victory. I'll do the bare minimum to get the victory, but I don't want to have to play this champion again. So you look as ugly as possible. I look as ugly as yeah. possible I doing it. Dardox Kindred was pretty good. It was. Uh, he had quite. that one bad play in the bottom lane where he got stun locked under turret, but aside from that, like, he gets that kill early. He's very active around the map. He got a ton of kindred marks at one point. By the end of it, I think he had 125 more range than Lucian in the team fight. So he was pretty effective throughout. I like this replay. If you look at the minimap, uh, all of Splice have decided to run bot lane. Well, uh, <laughs> the Zoe's just like, oh, okay. I guess I'm just going to take this free turret mid. And all Splice get for themselves is one kill. This was a cool play by Hootin, though. Look at yeah, the flash like mechanics one? here. Did you know a couple, oh, of, a couple patches ago, they actually buffed the E damage when you don't get the wall stun? Ooh. So uh, he's probably, he probably yeah, damage. damage. There yeah. you it was for go. Damage. Yeah, yeah. It's a damage E. Uh, no, but ultimately, <laughs> uh, this, uh, this team fight going in favor of Echo Fox, Dardock, Kindred, being left alive, able to clean up the fight pretty, pretty well. And again, they play team fights super well. We got to give them that credit. It's the reason they stayed in the game against Fnatic, despite falling so far down in the early game. And here, the moment Splice actually kind of didn't realize what they were doing in the early game and Echo Fox started getting a bunch of kills on Dardock, it felt like they could never really lose the game again uh, because they would just always be better in team fights. Mm -hmm. that was the tricky thing with the all magic damage team comp or what looked like an all magic damage team comp against Mundo is because Kindred got so fed and built a Blade of the Room King, they could still shred Mundo, which I think was the one crucial thing that helped. Got that executioners as well to help with the healing reduction. Mark, I want to talk a little bit more though about the day as a whole now, because this was again, uh, when we were looking at the setups of the two regions and like which teams would get kind of expected victories over others, this is one that was expected to go in favor of Echo Fox, but, but in large part sitting at two and two, 
where do we feel or how do we feel about the teams from both regions and, and what was expected versus what we've been shown here on day one? I think uh, Team Liquid, just looking only at day one, looks like the best team here, but that was because G2 was kind of doing their not optimal strategy, okay. smurfing around a little bit. So just purely on this day, I would say Team Liquid looks like the number one team. They also but played Splice. They also played Splice. So I understand that, but it was a clean victory, whereas we've seen other people who should be that smashing their opponents yeah. not being very clean. So I think Team Liquid is owed that. I think uh, G2 played the worst game of the summer split so far, but uh, it was against 100 Thieves that played it was a weaker team. Okay. So it actually ended up being still a win for, mm -hmm. for Europe. The Fnatic game as well, uh, kind of classic Fnatic now that they are pretty messy, some of the games with the way they're playing, uh, but they still felt somewhat in control for most of it. Yeah. So I think overall, seeing as Europe had Splice playing twice, which we expect to be the weakest team, that's why they lost two games. The fact G2 and Fnatic got their wins is a good sign. Yeah, I don't think there were many games that went against expectation. I think no. all four, the favorite in terms of result, in, right. did yeah. end up winning. Now, the champions that were used in the games was a little bit different than the expectation. Right. I think we saw a grand total of two marksmen in the bottom lane, and it was in the same TL versus Splice game. Everything else was just like Heimerdinger here and Swain there. So that part was cool, but as far as the power rankings, they pretty much stood still. I mean, my next question was going to be about whether or not the regional experts feel that their teams are getting caught off guard by anything specific. Again, we did see that Heimerdinger come out early in NA. It's only been banned against Golden Guardians, but it's yet to find its way to the Rift. So I'm wondering if we're seeing, you know, some of that tension in Champion Select actually manifest here b between the regions and, and not necessarily prioritizing the same things. I didn't really feel like there was anything that should have caught anyone too off guard. Maybe aside from the Aatrox, Aatrox. Nocturne, Zoe. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say, aside from the Aatrox being what like, surprise. what do I pick into this? And then yeah. Bumble clearly not being the answer. That was probably <laughs> the only thing I saw. Yeah, the big difference that did show up is the fact that EU prioritizes Pike and NA doesn't. Gotcha. And we played against two Pikes today. Uh, Splice didn't seem like it did much. And even playing against G2's Pike, it had a few good hooks, one over the wall on Aphromoo. It didn't feel like NA was flabbergasted with white with what Pike does, they just value the champion differently. Yeah, yeah. I feel like the European teams will not get surprised about any specific pick and ban phases. Yeah. I feel like last with rivals, we had that big surprise for the EU teams coming into the week one, uh, the day one, where NA would camp mid lane and then yeah. the entire EU strategies would just fall apart. That's not happening again. They're definitely yeah. not being surprised about what's happening in the games because we have we have the teams who play the same way that Echo Fox plays 100 Thieves, so they will know what's what's going on. You know, I realized I misspoke when I said that the record was two and two. If we count that grudge match at the top oh, of the yeah. day, oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Earth. Ahead, seven to two. Just had to throw that out yeah, there. It's worth five, 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 was worth five <laughs> points <laughs> arbitrarily. We're, we're not Let's take a look at tomorrow's schedule presented by Jersey Mike Subs. The day starts with the Rift Rivals pre-show at 12 p.m. PST. Then game one has a rematch of MSI opponents Team Liquid versus Fnatic. That's going to be a good one. Followed by Echo Fox versus G2. And three more matchups before we conclude the group stage. After that, though, teams will submit their bot lanes for the 2v2 gauntlet as teams compete to be named the best bot lane in the West. In particular, looking at this schedule, what are the major ones that jump out to you guys? TL Fnatic. Right the OG too as well. Yeah, I was going to say both those. Spring split champions. The three seeds both played twice today, as we've already mentioned. Yep. So the real meat of the tournament starts tomorrow. And then at the end of it, you get to see who the bot best bot lane in the West really is. The best bot lane in the West. I think the, the very last game of the day, Hunter Thieves and Splice, I kind of want both teams to be 0-2 going into it. Ah. And I want then the regions that's to the be decider. basically tied. And that's going to be the, the deciding game. And... You know, you have to send in your weakest team to see who's actually going to give you that uh, that first Which team. is interesting, right? Because then uh, the effect it has on the best exactly. of five portion on the third day being yeah. decided by the lower there you go. teams is going to so be you're very really interested in the worst teams playing each other. I mean, I think if it is even before that game, then yes, I am. I you, can see why you like casting you so much. Yeah. <laughs> he wants that image of the <laughs> hey, Simpsons. Hey, that was in the intro. <laughs> the Simpsons image with the monkeys fighting. That's, what, that's, <laughs> that's what great. Going, that's what he's going for. <laughs> Overall, a successful day one of Rivals, though, you think? I think it's been I fun. think so. It's yeah, been it crazy fun. exciting. So for myself, the cast and the entire live broadcast crew, thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow for more Riff Rivals. Good night.